Oh hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome back to Nerd Central, fellow nerds. Today, we're gonna be starting a series that I'm gonna be spinning out through the span of this year. And that's gonna be my top 10 favorite Nintendo games of all time. Some of them you can even see here. I actually got some out. We play. But I'm not here to talk about we... I'm not here to talk about we play. I'm here to talk about Chibi Robo Plug Into Adventure. And the series of games that came after that. So today, we're gonna start up number 10 with Chibi Robo Plug Into Adventure. I should probably check and see if these are right. Let's begin our journey by going all the way back to the year 2000. A good year, this didn't exist yet. Nintendo had just announced their new project for the next generation of consoles, the Project Dolphin. Still like the name better. Dolphin would later become the Nintendo GameCube, one of Nintendo's consoles. It uh, also came alongside the GBA, the Game Boy Advance, which was actually my first handheld. With the Nintendo 64 using cartridges as opposed to discs at the time, they were pretty much behind a generation, so it looked like this was going to be the next breath of fresh air for them. Insert the Nintendo GameCube, announced in, uh, released in 2001 with launch titles like Luigi's Mansion and Super Smash Bros. Melee. It was looking to be the greatest Nintendo console of all time. How much did it sell? Oh my god. Yeah, the Nintendo GameCube didn't really sell as well as Nintendo had thought and hoped. Mostly because of not having DVD support and also using the shrimpiest discs I have ever seen. It didn't really fly off the shelves. And which is sucks because there were a bunch of good games on this thing. And actually, most of my favorite games that I'm going to be talking about are on the Nintendo GameCube. Which leads me to talk about this company named Skip Limited. One of the most obscure partnership companies that have worked with Nintendo very closely are very widely unknown, which is sad because they've made a bunch of really cool games. I've played only two of them, being Chibi Robo and Captain Rainbow on the Wii. They've made other ones that are huge bangers that I've never been able to play, like Giftopia and LOL on the DS. Thank God! Captain Rainbow on the Wii, a Japan exclusive, but I'm very happy to have it. But undoubtedly, their biggest series is definitely Chibi Robo. And people still don't know what the crap this little thing is. Chibi Robo Plug Into Adventure was a sandbox style game that had you exploring a family's house with cute little knickknacks that you would collect on the way. And you would use stuff like toothbrushes to clean up little mud paw prints on the floor. And for all the things that you would do to help this family, they would give you happy points and moolah. Yes, that's how we pronounce it, moolah. Sure. And you use that to buy upgrades in the game and to undoubtedly become super chibi robo. So that's the game. This game's more different than I thought it would be. With Chibi Robo releasing on the end of a console's lifespan, it didn't really appeal to anyone because most of the time people were selling their GameCubes getting ready for the Wii. Or the DS. Which leads me to the sequel of Chibi Robo, Chibi Robo Park Patrol, released on the Nintendo DS. Only at Walmart! What were they thinking? Why not Target? I mean, the title was okay, but if you want to appeal to people to actually start buying Chibi Robo games, don't release it at a, 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 a Walmart! Park Patrol had you, uh, well, patrolling a park. Sure. I mean, it was an okay title. I mean, you patrolled a park. Well, the game's core is okay. It just doesn't feel Chibi Robo. I mean, I understand why, because of the graphical limits that the DS could spit out. But having it in a park just felt off. It wasn't really Chibi Robo, because the first Chibi Robo was special because it was in a house and you were a tiny robot exploring weird stuff, especially the family. But Park Patrol, it was dull. Which is why I move on to Chibi Robo. I refuse to say all four of those words out loud. Otherwise, it would disobey my religion. Now, before we talk about that version of Satan, uh, there was a, two games that act technically were games that came out before Ziplash, and that was Chibi Robo Photo Finder, also known as Pointless, and Chibi Robo 
plug into Adventure on the Wii with new play control, but it was released in Japan only. I smell pointless! Yeah, these weren't handed well either. One releasing only in Japan on a... Actually, probably the best option that they would have had to actually boost Chibi Robo's sales. The new play control for the Wii was a huge selling point for the Wii. Because of the GameCube backwards compatibility, people were starting to wonder, why can't I use a Wii remote? But now they can. But only people in Japan can do that with Chibi Robo! Now, this one being the only one in the series that I've never played, Chibi Robo Photo Finder, I wouldn't really say it was probably a good title, most because, well, the 3DS camera was pretty garbage. And also, free games on the 3DS didn't really get much attention. Especially the apps on the 3DS, because they were basically just DSi apps. Sadly, the one people pr probably think of the most when they think Chibi Robo is Chibi Robo Ziplash. A 3DS game released in 2015. It was a 2D platformer with Chibi Robo as the main character. Okay, first problem with this. We had way too many 2D platformers both on the 3DS and the Wii U. Second, Chibi Robo does not do well as a 2D platformer. He's supposed to be a open world style game. So it just does not fit here, it's weird. Number three, this doesn't feel like Chibi Robo at all. Chibi Robo doesn't even explore the Americas. He doesn't explore the Philippines. He doesn't do any of that crap. And most of the time, we're not even in the Philippines. We're in Blockland. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god, I think I'm gonna pass out. I mean, this game could have been fine, but it just doesn't show that they even cared. I'm pretty sure Skip Limited didn't even have much control over this game. It was mostly, mostly Vanpool and Nintendo. But it's such a bland game, you never really feel a sense of adventure that you should be. Also, why does he call it World One's Boss? Yeah, these places are all around the world, but... Telly, for some reason, calls it World One, World Two, World Three, World Three One, World Three Two, World Three Three. Like a traditional 2D platformer. But why make them real places? It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the game plays out like a traditional 2D platform, and you got really, all you can do is jump, ziplash, whiplash, instant karma. So there's these little orange pads that you have to charge up your ziplash to even use. Why are they orange blocks? Why can't they be like outlets or something actually that makes sense? Why would a orange block and a power plug come together? It just, I don't know. This game makes no sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. All the games don't make sense except for the first one, which is why it's, I'm even talking about it. But why did they do this to Chibi Robo? Because we're probably not going to see Chibi Robo at all in every, any of the games. They're probably not going to even make any games. He's just a trophy in Smash Brothers. Now, with all of the games being okay, it's just the bad marketing decisions that led him to this point. Just doesn't feel like Nintendo really cared about this character, and Shigeru Miyamoto loved this character. It wouldn't have made it to the GameCube if he didn't like it, because he supported it. But why end it on a 2D platformer? I would kill to have a Chibi Robo game on the Switch, let alone the Wii U would have been cool to have a Chibi Robo game on. But no, they sacrifice it towards a console that had zero games released on it after that. A console that had released new play control stuff, but they only released it in Japan. They released a DS game at a, a store that only sells hunting gear. And then they released the, the, uh, well, a boat of iron. I got Is that sound? Oh, that's the sound. I have virginity. Oh my god! No! Yes, hello? Yeah, I need an exorcist stat! It's upstairs. Also, how did you make that doorbell sound? I broke my doorbell like three minutes ago. It's one of my many gifts. What is the entity you deal with? Uh, the entity, it was, um... 
what's the word? Chafe? Does it say Chibi Robo Ziplash on it? Yes! Wait, how'd you know that already? You don't look like a virgin? Oh, I just got back from an exorcism with that gang. Just right over there. I can tell it went well. Quit your yapping and just take it. I think I didn't have one already? Have you ever seen that Ghostbusters movie with Bill Murray? Just do what they did in that. So essentially, this is like my proton pack, and I'm just stealing stuff from Ghostbusters because I have no mental capacity to make actually good writing. Well, see you later. Alright, demon. Chibi Robo. Zip Lash. Not gonna hurt ya. Huh. I don't remember putting that pile of crap there. Wait a second. That says Chibi Robo Zip Lash on it. I thought that's just what crap looked like now. Ah, I got the game cartridge. Wait, cartridge? Car cartridge. Anyway. <coughs> well, I think it's dead. Probably eradicated. So that's what trauma feels like. Everybody's super song.